In this video, we're going to point out some of the safety devices that are on this furnace and where they're located. Looking at the burner area, we have a pressure switch up here, single pressure switch that has to make before anything else can happen. By the way, this pressure switch, if I were to jumper it out, it would operate even if the inducer did not pull the hot gases out. However, when you went to start this thing up a second time after it shut down, if it actually didn't burn itself up, kick off the limit, this pressure switch uh, is looked at by the uh, integrated furnace control and it will not start if it shows closed before it starts. That's pretty much standard and everything. Okay, let's look for limit switches. Okay, here's a rollout switch right there. Uh, on this one, there's just one. Some of these had two, one on this side and one on that side if it's a multi-position furnace. This one doesn't seem to have that. That rollout switch is only going to kick off if the flame rolls out the front. For some reason, it's not drafting right or whatever, and the flame rolls out the front. Sometimes heat exchanger cracks will do this. It will kick off, and it's a manual reset. So you actually have a button. Let's see if I can show that to you again. There's a button right there in the center. Okay, there's another limit switch right there. And it is the airflow limit. Now that is an automatic reset. That means like if you have a plug filter or something like that, it will kick off and as soon as the temperature drops back, it will start again. Occasionally these furnaces will have a uh, manual reset limit on the blower. That's if they were set up so they, they could be uh, used on a uh, downflow application. This one does not have it, but sometimes you'll see one. It'll be down there in the bottom of the uh, blower housing. The biggest safety device that's on this thing is the integrated furnace control. That pretty much controls everything in the furnace. It controls the fan. It has a flame safety control. Uh, it, the limit switches go through it, and the thermostat hooks up to it. Uh, another safety sensor is the flame rod. It's supposed to uh, sense flame usually within three to seven seconds, uh, depending on the furnace. That's supposed to sense flame. Uh, if it doesn't sense flame, it shuts off. On this one, it's a little different. If you did my little, uh, what's wrong with this furnace, you, uh, you know what, what I'm talking about. The hot surface igniter, which is right there, is uh, not only lights the burners, but it also is a flame sense. It does flame sense uh, also. This one has a flame rod. And the reason a flame rod was put into this thing is because they had troubles with that hot surface igniter sensing flame. They were always a problem. They finally did, what, did away with them completely. But they were always a problem. Ream put these uh, kind of aftermarket flame rods on these things because of the problems. Eventually they just eliminated using hot surface igniter at all and went totally to flame rod. So if you disconnect this flame rod it may still run. So anyway that's pretty much all the flame safety devices and the high temperatures and on this furnace. And fairly simple furnace, an old 80 percenter, you know, so pretty pretty simple. That's it on this one.